Hi, this is Jeremy Moskowitz, Enterprise Mobility MVP and founder of MDM and GPAnswers.com and Policy Pack Software. And in this video, I'm going to do a walk before you run with MSI App Attach. So uh, I saw MSI App Attach in preview and I wanted to uh, jump on it to understand it better. I fell into a couple of traps and I want you to learn from my mistakes and maybe you can get it right the first time, even though I didn't. So first and foremost, you got to start with a version of Windows that can support this. So um, the way that I got a version of Windows that supported this would be to first get the what's called 2004 version, which is not the year 2004. Instead, it actually means the year um, 2020, month 04. And then I upgraded to this build. Now, the way I did that was to, again, first I got the, the um, the version of Windows from MSDN, and then I flipped into the Windows Insider program. So uh, the way you do that is that you go to the Windows Insider program settings, and I went to the fast ring. Okay, you just give it some information, and by the time you're done, you 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 tell it that you're in the the fast the fast builds. Okay, then you go ahead and wait for a little while, and then magic, you now have a build that's compatible with um, MSI App Attach. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing you're going to need is uh, a couple of MSI X packages. Um, you're not going to actually use the MSI pa X packages directly, even though this is called MSI X app attach. Uh, technically, you attach VHD files, but you're going to need some MSI Xs to get started. Now, in my uh, in my little demonstration here, I have a folder called Demos One, and I have a bunch of packages here that are ready to go. A bunch of MSI X packages that are ready to go. So you can use an MSI X file, an App X bundle, an MSI X bundle, and uh, an App X bundle. Right. So there's, I think there's four. Yeah, App X bundle. There you go. So there's there's four different types that you can possibly use. I went right for the one that was an MSI X directly, although they're all ostensibly the same. So I'm gonna. I, I used MSI X. Uh, Commander, okay, that's the one that I used for this example. Okay, so how, how do you get these MSIX files? I hear you cry. Well, let me show you how I did it. There may be other ways, but this is the way that I found them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new browser here, and I'm going to show you uh, a repository from Microsoft that has a bunch of these already. And it took me a little while to figure this out. And I'm going to paste in this page here, which is the WinGet package manifest page. What the heck is this? Well, Winget is a new thing that Microsoft shipped that's not anything at all to do with MSIX. I'm just using it here as an example. Winget enables you to download applications that are pre-packaged as executables or MSIs or MSIX. So what I did was I looked through here and I searched for the ones that have MSIX associated with it. And what did I get? Look at that. I got all these applications that actually ship as MSIX. So what I did is I took my um, my MSIX Commander one. I took a look at this this guy, MSIX Commander, and you can see that the t that the um, the installer type is MSIX. And to get the URL, I just plopped it in here and pasted it in here, and download occurs. Okay, so now I have an MSIX package. That's the first step is getting your MSIX packages. So once again, how did I do that? I went to GitHub slash Microsoft slash WinGet packages and I looked up the packages that uh, the WinGet packages that actually already shipped as an MSIX to sort of like lower the bar to entry. Remember, this is walk before you run. It's totally true that you can actually get and make your own MSIX packages through um, the MSIX tool or a, a package like Advanced Installer, which I'm a big fan of. So there are ways to make your own MSIX packages. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to walk before I run. I didn't want to add any more complexity. So I basically stole an MSIX package, uh, you know, to uh, to get you to get started. Okay, that's thing number one. So I'm gonna next thing I want to do here is again I just I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna join my domain here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to pause the camera and I'm going to come back and I'm going to I'm going to um, continue on and log on as an administrator to this box. So hang tight. Be back in a second. Okay, we're back. So now I'm logged on. Actually, is domain admin on this uh, on this target machine again? This is just walk before you run. Okay, and that's going to be fine. 
These are my scripts that I've cobbled together, and I want to explain how I got them cobbled together. I use two different sources. One is the official docs page on MSI App Attach, which you can find at Microsoft. So if you just uh, Bing for MSI App Attach docs, you're going to find this no problem. And then the second one I got from a tip from my friend Rory Monahan, a fellow MVP. He pointed me that these uh, scripts are also available from this person's, um, I think this gen gentleman works for Microsoft also, um, on his GitHub. So this is uh, GitHub slash Tom Hickling, okay? And there are one, two, three, four, five scripts, okay? And I'm, I, I, I did use a little bit of his and a little bit of what Microsoft has and I kind of cobbled it together. So the very first thing uh, that you'll need to do uh, is that you're going to download? You're going to actually um, create a VHD. Uh, I would I would not worry too much about this uh, for Azure stuff. Okay, um, MSI App Attach works perfectly in no matter what format you want to do it. And this walk before you run demo, I'm going to do everything locally. Okay, so everything you do in the walk before you run, you could do if you want to go do it on real machines, desktops, laptops, VDI, Windows Virtual Desktop, whatever. So I highly encourage you to just do what I'm showing you here to walk before you run, get the feel for it, and you're ready to go. You do want to generate a VHD package for the MSIX, okay? So instead of uh, instead of using this line by line, I did rely on Tom's, uh, Tom's uh, script zero to generate a VHD file, okay? However, you're going to need a little utility called the MSIX Manager Tool. So when you go ahead and click on it, you'll uh, you'll be thrust into getting the download here. I've already done that, and I've got that ready to go in this folder. Demos, uh, let's see, demos one in MSIX packages and VHDs for App Attach. So what I've done is I've put the MSIX Manager .exe and the um, DLLs, I just like threw absolutely everything that I would ever need in the exact same place as my MSIX Commander MSIX I downloaded earlier. So now those things are all in one place. The download, the so this is the download, this is part of the download, this is the other part of the download, and you can see this is more part of the download. I've, exp I've you know, torn that apart using WinZip, and then I've also got my MSIX, um, my MSIX file here, okay? The next thing we're going to do is basically convert that sucker from MSIX over to uh, VHD. So I took a look at Tom's example here, and what I did was he was talking about VLC, but I didn't want to use VLC because I didn't have a VLC MSIX package. So uh, what I decided to do was I'm going to, um, instead of using VLC, I'm going to do MSIX Commander. Okay. So the idea is that anywhere he's got the word uh, VLC, you're going to change it to MSIX Commander. X commander or whichever one you decide to use. Okay, so uh, what this thing is going to do is it's going to create a new VHD file, uh, take the the application that you downloaded. Okay, so it's going to create a VHD file first. Then it's going to mount it as E. It's going to create a folder in there called MSX Commander, and then it's going to expand the MSI into that VHD file. So I've already got that here ready to go well uh, let's uh, without further ado uh, and there's also this certificate thing i didn't run into this certificate problem which is good because i hate certificates i don't want to have to deal with that for right now but i'll just do this anyway so i'm going to copy all of these things i'm actually going to go to powershell here powershell as an admin if this thing wants to cooperate here yep run as admin okay so now i'm in an admin powershell and i'll go to demos and then go to MSIX packages and so on. Okay, so all the guts are right here. I'm just gonna take what I've already got here. You saw how I did that. I took Tom's script. I just trimmed it a little bit and then I'm just pasting it in because I'm lazy, okay? Bing, bing, bing. It did all the things. It's, it created the MSIX VHD file, okay? And expanded the MSIX into that into that VHD. So in fact, if we take a look, I think it's still mounted. I think it mounts itself as E. If we take a look at E, hey, look, there's a folder called MSX Commander, MSX Commander, and there's this is the package name. This is going to be important. So you're going to want to copy this information and hold on to it for future reference. Hang on to that. Okay. Then what we'll do is we'll go in here and just 
take a look around. Yep, it all looks pretty good. We're all pretty happy with that. Great, hold that thought. So now if we go back to Microsoft's guidance here, the next thing we need to do is to know the, the so that so we just created the VHD, we expanded the MSIX, and now we need to, um, well, we would have to install certificates, but I don't have that problem here, so that's good. I'm gonna just bypass over that here. Then what we need to do is we need to know the volume ID of the VHD file, okay? So that's just with an old fashioned command mount vol. So let's go ahead and take that, take a look at that. So we go to mount vol here. We're going to see that, okay, E has this GUID. You're gonna hold that also. So let's actually, let's go ahead and in Notepad++, what I'm gonna do is just gonna store some of these items for future reference, although my final example will be a little different. So this is my um, vol GUID. Okay, there we go, get rid of all the brackets. This is my package name. Let's go back and grab that package name. That's this puppy right here, bing, 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 Get all that guy. All right, there's the package name. All right, that's good news. All right. All right, next up on the docket is what's called the staging script, okay? So in the Microsoft guide, it's called stage the PowerShell script. It sh probably should be called PowerShell script that performs the staging, uh, but okay, whatever. The point is, is that um, the, the PowerShell script that performs the staging needs to know the volume ID, which we got. It needs to know the package, and that's about it. So what I'm gonna do is I've already got all this here in Notepad++, okay? So I've, I've called this my stage script. So I've, I'm putting in, here's my source, application VHDs, MSIX Commander VHD. I've got my package name, I put that in there and I'm all set to go. And I put in my my volume GUID. So those are the three things I need to know. The rest is kind of magic and I don't need to know any of that. So let me just go ahead and close this out. All right, I'm gonna go. My suggestion is that you take each of these regions and do them line, well, either line by line or region by region. So, oh, well, before I forget, let me go back into disk, uh, disk manager here. Just make sure uh, that I don't have it mounted because I needed to, okay, so let me just go ahead and detach that. All right, there we go. All right, so what I'm gonna do is take the first chunk of the PowerShell script and just paste it in. Let's try that one more time. Let's do a copy and a big old paste. All right, and hit enter. No red, no problem. That's good news. So I'm, I've entered that region. The next thing we wanna do is mount the VHD. So I'm gonna just take the one line that mounts the VHD as read only and just copy that guy in, copy that and paste. Do we get it? Boom, we got it, that's great. So now it's mounted. If we were to go back to device, uh, to back to disk manager here, what we should see is that it's been mounted. Yep, but no drive letter, that's great. So mounted and no drive letter, that's the idea. And then lastly, we're going to uh, do an MSIX junction piece. So let's get right to this part, okay, before the final death throws of this thing. So we'll copy that, paste that, any red? Great. So now we can see that it's actually done the junction between the inside of the package uh, in the in the uh, MSIX uh, VHD file basically, and made an association on the real on the real disk. Okay, so it's basically there's there's a part of the real disk that's jumping the hyperspace into the VHD file. So that's what we just did there. So now the last but not least, we're going to do is take this is actually perform the stage part. This is the actual attach part. So we'll go ahead and copy that. And then I'm going to just like I said, paste it all in looking for any red or any other weird stuff. No, no other weird stuff. We should be good. And that's it. If all went well, if I look, sometimes you'll see it at the beginning here, uh, which will show a new package there. And other times you have to kind of go look for it. Um, and I'm looking for MSI X app attach and I don't know why I don't see it here so let me just see MSI oh right because that duh all that does that's the staging part the staging part just makes it available for this user and all other users I lost my brain that's the important part so you've done the attach part but you don't have it like in the user space brain you have it in the computer space brain but not in the user space brain. So what we'll do is now take the register script. Again, I, I basically, let's take a look. You need the package name, which we have, uh, which is there. And we, oh, nope, nope. That's That was the original source. Notice how that's commented. So for MSIX Commander here, I 
just have the package name equals the package name we got earlier. Let's go ahead and just check it out. Yep, there's the package name we got earlier. All right. So and then we're going to take that and just take the, the register script, basically lock, stock, and barrel. And this is what we're going to see happen in user space. So now we're just going to paste all that stuff in and bing, bing, bing. That's, that's it. So we had it attached and now we really kind of got it into user space so there it is msix commander so if i go ahead and run this utility it runs perfectly fine i don't claim to be an expert in the utility but i can see that it's basically working woo -woo, and we're off to the races however what i want to do here is i'm going to um i'm going to save this because what i want to do is switch user and re-register this so i'm going to go ahead and switch user here and I'm going to log on as just a regular old big dumb user. Okay, East Sales User 1, East Sales User 1. Okay, so now I'm logged on as big dumb user 1, uh, and he does not have MSI, uh, does not have the MSIX commander because the application has not been attached as him. So how do we do that? Well, we got to go back to PowerShell land. Okay, and this is a standard user now doing the standard user stuff. This is where now we go to once again register we're going to take the stuff that we did earlier okay so we're specifying the package name we know where the path is and then we're off to the races so we'll go ahead and paste this in and boom there's the attached part again i know i'm doing this all locally you could do it on a server or go bananas notice how here it doesn't magically show up first as a newly installed app here as the big dumb user i had to go fight for it ah, there it is msix commander and there i can see it there so i ran into that little pitfall as well but you can see that it works there and you're off to the races so that that's all the um that is how to get it working but actually it turns out you need to do a little bit more to get it to unwork so there's this idea of deregistering so deregistering basically says take a package and i don't want to attach it as the user anymore. So there it goes. It's now gone from user meet space here. So no more MSI app attach. Let me go ahead and switch users over back to my, um, my admin account here. Okay, so now that we're back logged in as an admin, the last thing we need to do is we can uh, deregister it from this user if we want to. So I'll go ahead and deregister it from this user. So now he won't, this particular user doesn't have it, and there we go. And then lastly, if we want to um, rip the knob off so that no user can have it, that would be destage. Okay, so we'll destage, and uh, yeah, I'm sure I want to continue, and that's it. So with that in mind, there's no more, uh, no more ability for this to be used at any user. So this is Walk Before You Run. Hopefully, uh, the way I put these scripts together will help you out again. Uh, it was just a bunch of copying and pasting and really fine tuning and understanding what was needed here. But you, know, you can take the, the scripts that we talked about um, that exist in Microsoft land and also in Tom Hickling's GitHub land, use them to your advantage. Again, if you wanna just take a look at them, um, they're, they're great. They, they sort of helped me out a lot and got me started. All I did was I trimmed them down to get them to do exactly what I wanted. And then I paid attention for things like the source has to be exactly right. This uh, idea of the parent folder inside, um, uh, also inside the, the, the um, VHDX has to be correct. The package name has to be correct. And the volume GUID has to be correct. Once I kind of got all that squared away, the rest sort of fell into place. Of course, I had to have the latest version of Windows as well. And I had to have the, um, the MSIX utility also ready to go. So there's a bunch of moving parts to get this to work. And uh, hopefully this helps you out and gets you off the road. Okay. Uh, thanks so very much for watching and talk to you soon.